Well, I was hoping to present to you a video where in the end I could have the mechanism all cased up and with dials and hands on it and in running condition. Uh, me just timing it out and adjusting the length of the hairspring so it would keep reasonable time. But sadly, it has presented a few issues that um, I didn't expect, and I guess I should expect for a timepiece that is as old as it is um, to run into issues like this. So we're still still working with it. But to start with uh, the mainsprings, like I mentioned in my last video, I ordered four mainsprings of four different strengths, and we'll go through uh, starting with the, the weakest one and find out which one works best with it. When I took the, the old mainspring out of the, the barrel, the, the original barrel arbor had this uh, notch filed in it, um, where the mainspring was bent around and hooked onto that, but you can see here that originally there was indeed a, a hook on the barrel arbor as there typically is, and it is uh, smashed down, worn down, and uh, wasn't useful as a hook anymore. Right here I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to take a small chisel punch and try to raise the edge on uh, the hook to, to make it useful again. Ultimately this effort will will fail and I'll have to go a different route but um, I thought instead of using the slot that was filed in there um, I would restore the barrel harbor hook. Um, every mainspring that I've ever worked on um, the inner coil of the mainspring has a hole drilled in it, which then um, is caught on, on the arbor hook. <clears throat> and so uh, I thought it would be best to just restore this hook as opposed to bending that inner coil around and using the slot that someone else uh, had filed into it. What I ended up doing was uh, drilling out the, the steel pin that the hook was formed out of. Now, drilling steel out of brass can sometimes be a bit tricky. Um, the drill will want to wander a little bit and go over into the softer metal, uh, which is the brass, and uh, wander away from the harder steel. Thankfully, I was able to drill it all the way down and uh, drill the, into a good depth uh, without the drill bit wandering. Although, if you can see here, uh, I am not purposely drilling a bit off center. Um, that's fine because I would end up grinding out the remaining part of that pin with a, a small carbide tip dental burr um, and then uh, after that was completely ground out I would drill it with a slightly larger drill bit just to make the hole uh, perfect cylindrical hole that we could fit a new pin in. Here I'm just friction fitting, tapping in a new steel pin.
And whenever you get into the making aspect of watchmaking or clock making, there seems to be an awful lot of filing, awful lot of use of needle files uh, to shape metal. And though this is a very small project, it's no exception to that rule. you're going to see here in a bit um, the better the shape of the the barrel hook or the arbor hook and you also see the slot that the previous repairer had filed into it and that hook that's about the way it should look now when it came to the mainspring the mainspring was entirely too long uh, and so it required me to, to cut it short and um, just like the arbor has a hook on it that grabs the mainspring the outer coil um, is has a hole cut into it and the barrel itself has a hook in it which that outer coil will will grab onto and so here again more filing with needle files uh, to shape uh, the hole and the very end of the mainspring. And this is what the end of the mainspring should look like. And this is what it should look like when it's loaded into the barrel. Now, to um, once you have the, the piece fully assembled, a fusee, um, there needs to be a, a little bit of power loaded on the fusee chain even before you wind it. That's where the the ratchet wheel and the click that I had previously mentioned come into play. Um, here I'm just I, I've made this little wrench to we're just moving it maybe three or four clicks just to put enough power on there that when the mainspring is towards the end of its running cycle there's still power loaded on the mechanism and as you can see uh, or you can hear maybe that um, it is ticking so even near the end of its cycle uh, there is power on the mechanism which is what we want here's a, a picture of the wrench that that I made and I'm at this time winding it up for the first time uh, I am winding it fully and what I should have done is probably just wound it one full turn of the fusee um, just to test it out because ultimately um, the piece the piece stopped and it would have been easier to do the adjustments, the necessary adjustments, if it wasn't fully wound. What ended up happening is, um, and I suspected that this might be an issue, that uh, it started uh, stopping on uh, what I would consider a predictable basis and I suspected it was um, the meshing of the contrite wheel that I had made and the escape wheel pinion and so I was able to while it was still assembled do some minor adjustments to the height of the contrite 
the contrate wheel and uh, and and ultimately it seemed to be running fine when I ran it in horizontal position as I show here um, it seemed to run fine uh, but then when I put it in the upright position the vertical position which is the position that this timepiece will eventually run in it it stopped almost immediately and what that tells me is because in the upright position there is more friction that um, that it was not a, a gearing issue so much as it is a power issue so I had to go back and put the next stronger mainspring in and so I had to cut it file a new end to it uh, like I did the previous one and immediately upon installing it um, you could you could hear that it ran a lot stronger and um, and it seemed to run in uh, in the upright position well as well. I was still having uh, issues with it stopping periodically, and um, upon uh, inspection, I, I still saw that there was issues with the the gearing uh, between the contrate wheel and the escape wheel pinion and ultimately I had to let it wind down completely disassemble it again and what I found is that in my adjustments in the mechanism that I put the the contrite wheel out of flat and when you when the the gear wobbles and it affects the the meshing of the two gears together and if that meshing isn't perfectly even and perfectly smooth it can stop the mechanism and that's what I suspected was the issue but uh, while the contrite wheel was uh, a problem that I created the wobble there I had noticed previously um, that also the escape wheel pinion um, wobbled you can see here you can see when I was just spinning the two gears together you can see the wobble in the escape wheel pinion and while I support the pinion uh, you can actually now see that it's the pivot that wobbles so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down the pivot just slightly just enough to make the the, the pivot run true um, and here I'm I'm finishing the pivot. Um, so this was uh, an issue that I left previously because it was done by the manufacturer and I thought well obviously it's run well with that slight wobble that I'll leave it but um, while I was fixing things I thought I would make it true and uh, and eliminate all the possibilities and so with the wobble in the contrate wheel and the wobble in the escape wheel pinion both addressed I figured that this would uh, remedy any any issues that uh, would cause this timepiece to stop and what I found is no uh, it still would periodically stop. Um, the first time I ran this, it ran for six hours uh, just fine, and then it stopped. And the next time I ran it, it stopped twice in the first hour, and I started it each time, and then after that, it ran the full cycle without stopping again and so unlike the previous issue where it stopped it in a stopped in a predictable manner this is happening in a very unpredictable manner and because of that it's uh, difficult to diagnose uh, it's rather frustrating um, 
So I'm going to continue on observing this, uh, running it. I'm left with, uh, you know, the last time that I w really looked at it. There's a couple things that I'd like to um, address yet that might uh, at least expose the issue, if not eliminate the issue. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm not really sure what it is that is um, causing the timepiece to stop and it's happening in an unpredictable fashion. I've eliminated the possibility of the mainspring. It runs strong when it does run, and I've eliminated now the possibility of the contrite wheel and escape wheel pinion meshing issues. Um, so imagine, if you will, um, the frustration that uh, it is to me right now. At times like this, it is a real blessing to have a patient customer. Um, I have done substantial work to this since the last video, but sadly, I don't have a working timepiece, a predictably working timepiece. So bear with me. Um, Hopefully, shortly, very shortly, I'll have another video uh, where I can show and tell you that I've, I've figured it out. And, and after that, then, we can move on to the alarm mechanism, but not before this is remedied.